the 1st of August, 1943, Operation Tidal Wave was to send a swarm of B-24 bombers on a low-altitude bombing mission on the oil refineries in the Romanian city of Ploesti. After a disorganized flight, including accidents due to orders for absolute radio silence, the U.S. Air Force bombers arrived over Romania in scattered formation. They didn't find the stronghold unprepared. The defense system comprised of hundreds of high-caliber 8.8cm flak, 18-barrel and 10cm flak, 38 anti-aircraft guns, and several other low-caliber guns. By the end of the last wave of attack, only about 88 B-24s, mostly in awful shape, managed to return. The heroic deeds of the air crews that went on that mission are etched to the pages of history. But never again did the U.S. attempt a low-altitude air raid using heavy bombers. The B-24 bomber was mass-produced during the Second World War using a moving assembly line, the largest which would be built at Willow Run, Michigan. The first B-24 rolled off the assembly line on October 1st, 1942. However, by the end of December, the plant had only assembled 56 planes. After major improvements by early 1944, Bombers were coming off the mile-long line assembly at a rate of one an hour. The huge plant ran two nine-hour shifts a day and employed 42,000 people, most of them being women. The B-24 known as the Liberator and the Flying Boxcar was credited with helping the United States and its allies win the war. Four 1,200-horsepower Pratt & Whitney engines enabled the plane to fly long distances, loaded with more than 8,000 pounds of bombs. Those of us who love vintage watches know the deep history and brutal conflict that these military wristwatches have endured and are forever tied to. By World War II, Wittenauer had established a reputation for use by those who needed reliability, such as navigators, explorers, and astronomers. Arabic hour numerals form a sharp package that looks just as relevant today as it did back when these watches were worn by the fighting men of the sky. This watch is definitely a period piece with its railroad-style chapter ring. We have an inner 24-hour counter and a sub-seconds counter at the 6th position. The loom on the blue steel hands is long gone, and the numerals have taken a dark, mossy appearance. The dial itself has aged beautifully over time, with an almost champagne discoloration throughout. It's a no-frills service watch, intended to be worn and tested in the fields of combat. The case is a modest size, at 32 and a half millimeters. With drilled lug holes, a screw down case back, and an easy grip crown, which smoothly winds the movement. The crystal on this watch appears to be a new old stock and is perfectly domed on top of the case. Clean and serviced, the 15 jewel movement keeps as good time now as it did in the 1940s. During the Second World War, Wristwatch manufacturers gave up a lot to support the war effort. All did their part in supplying precision instruments and vital equipment for the men overseas. Men like those who risked all flying the B-24 Liberator from the islands of the Pacific to the air raids over Berlin. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't and I'll catch you guys on the next one.